so ladies and gentlemen any questions or anything that you wanted to share your thoughts about the entire thing shock sure. can we hand over the mic to him sir my name is dheeraj pratap and i am a, a it consulting uh, company owner Uh, firstly i must congratulate you guys i was really impressed uh, knowing so much about mizoram today uh, and it is saddening actually for me also uh, that being in one country we are so much less aware of the cities that we have the states that we have in our country so uh, one or two questions i had in my mind while i was looking at the presentations today uh, one of the questions i had was is the government have does the government have any um, tax incentives policies in place for investors or companies who wish to establish their organization in uh, mizoram thank you very much thank you very much uh, we do have our industrial policy some years ago and since you know we are in a very remote place and we are not power supplies and there is other constraints there and because of that we don't propose much incentive to to the uh, investors or industry but then we can assure you that we shall do our best to work together so that whatsoever come for what feel neglected or on the other hand that uh, they are all very much welcome by the state government of mizoram and that we will see whatever is possible on our side to make the uh, endeavor successful there thank you sir so sir i have also consulted the singapore government for their tourism uh, so the platform the technology that they use is provided by us so global uh, promotion of singapore what i could analyze from whatever i saw today uh, the biggest power that mizoram i can analyze is basically sincere educated and uh, honest workforce uh, that is i think to a great extent underutilized so more than industrial uh, if internet connectivity if uh, airport connections if uh, i think office and all should not be a problem at all uh, can be connected so it's because right now i think india is booming as far as it is concerned so more than industry farming i think if we focus because singapore we all know how singapore became singapore it's hardly 25 square kilometers of land they have zero resources and still they are the biggest power today in asia uh, and this is because again they have sincere honest uh, i was really impressed to see the uh, the shops without the shop owners so if you have that kind of a culture i think the power is if you can get good internet connectivity skill development can easily be done uh, because you have educated uh, labor there uh, and that can absolutely be something that we can look forward to thank you thank you very much uh we are working on eco tourism now and we have got uh, great potential uh, for eco tourism and whatever you have said just now are very much encouraging for us uh of course think to be compared to singapore and other parts of the world but then we are striving uh, to become just about the most progressive states in the country state in the country in fact under our new economic development program uh, in collaboration with the iim kolkata we have been trying to you know this uh, we are encouraging entrepreneurship for our young educated people and many people have come forward now and as far as possible we have been helping them from our commerce and industry department but of course it is uh, uh, so far in a very limited way but under this uh, new economic development program we are uh, going forward and also in collaboration with this iim in kolkata we have been uh, trying to encourage 
most of the young educated people to come forward under this entrepreneurship. In fact, in Mizoram, since we do not have any corporation or industry or any factory, the only employer is government of Mizoram. It's the only employer. And churches, of course, in a small way, are also employed. Besides these two, there is no employer at all in Mizoram. And because of that, uh, we're encouraging young people for this entrepreneurship. And under uh, various departments, they can be assisted in various ways. And if uh, industrial houses come forward, of course, they are most welcome in their own um, humble and simple way shall be able to assist them. But one thing I can assure you is that uh, <coughs> to begin with, it will be a very difficult task, it will be an uphill task, because even though the climate is very good in Mizoram, but geologists say that the soil formation is very loose, and it is a landslide prone area, and we are a very heavy monsoon area. In fact, last year, right from March, 1st March, till about 20 December, we have been having rain. And because of that, the economy has been adversely affected. But we are working on repairing uh, this. And because of this uncertain weather, we are raining under this. And in spite of that, we are doing our best to invite and to improve. whatever industry or whatever manufacturing system is there. And besides, we are uh, well, now this broad gauge rail, uh, railhead has come to Bairabi. From there we are taking to uh, Aizol. Uh, they will be completing within next year. And from there, from Aizol, we are taking this to, uh, in Mizo, we, 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 it is known as Port Quichua. It is going to be an international trade center with Bangladesh. And Bangladesh is very keen to have this. In fact, uh, I have met uh, Madam uh, Begum Sheikh Hashina two times. They are very, very keen now because they need uh, to have a good number of things from Mizoram. And the work there is uh, progressing very well. And on, on our side also, government of India is also very keen in developing this. And to that point, we're proposing to take railhead. And then to meet with this uh, Teladan Multimodal Transit Project, which will be, which will, uh, by which Mizoram will be the gateway for trade and commercial service uh, as in countries, we propose to bring railhead up to Long Klai, the last district headquarter in the south. And has also been done by the railways, railways, I believe, at least up to Port Wichua, survey investigation has been done because recently the GM met me there. And to meet with this proposal, we are going to have another uh, airport in the south. But as I said, since the soil formation is very loose, we don't have hard, hard rocks there in Mizoram. In fact, well, Constructing this Lengthu Airport, the only airport now, we have to import hard rocks from neighboring Assam. And because of that, the construction cost has become very, very expensive. But then we're striving on this. Good afternoon. My name is Deepak Khera and I'm a hospitality consultant. I was involved in setting up more than 70 hotels in this country earlier through a brand, a chain, and then independently as a consultant. And I've set up most of the hotels throughout the country, but was unfortunate to do that in the uh, Northeast sector, because there were certain issues, certain political issues, which I will share with you when the right time comes. My, uh, the biggest problem, what most of the investors face, is that there are a lot of licenses, permissions, approvals, and sanctions required to set up a hospitality unit, whether it's a restaurant or a hotel. Now, some of these uh, issues are controlled by state government. 
some are controlled by central government and some of them are controlled by supreme court so generally what happens is that earlier the in between people or go getters or people who are trying to collaborate between a government and an investor used to say kindly start the project and as and when the project is coming up we will get you the licenses so generally a study has shown that it takes uh, between 12 to 15 months to build a 220 250 room hotel with all the infrastructure and approximately 30 months more to get approvals licenses and till that time the property is remain standing the interest on the investment is going and a lot of issues are coming the chain or the individual then they get disheartened and then they have a feeling that did we do the right thing this has happened in the past i can give you uh, practical examples but now here my question is that if we need to avoid this and uh, i was lucky enough to uh, initiate certain hotels and uh, hospitality projects outside the country as big as not big in terms of size but as advanced as switzerland to as backward in you know traditional terms as in africa in tanzania where people are very very focused on the development of their projects so they have one window for all the approvals and licenses which is done within one month on just the project report and if the construction is based on the project report there are not there is nothing required after that you build you operate you manage you franchise so are we considering this kind of an approach because this approach will really really interest three types of people the international chains who are actually in India but are looking at various expansion uh, places but because of the land value so high they they want to go to new places be individual investors who already are running one or two properties and want to expand and see the domestic chains who now at the moment are looking at expansion but are facing a big competition from the foreign chains so it's an internal competition too so my thought or my question I, I won't say it's a question my suggestion would be that are we considering that and if we are uh, then how do we publicize it thank you, thank you very much for the questions uh, we agree with most of your uh, um, uh, questions uh, but uh, you know is of doing business is still uh, something that the uh, central government is uh, required to work out. It's not the, the, the problem of state government or the problem uh, uh, can be solved by the state government alone. It has to be done by uh, Team India. So I think the central government and state government is doing uh, a, a lot on this uh, front and we are improving our ease of doing business ranking lately and we are doing a lot of uh, this thing uh, in, in, in the future as well. In the state government we are doing the best uh, for the best uh, uh, to ease uh, doing business there. That's why this roadshow is, is there, so that we can get it feedback and take at home and look at our policy. And uh, whatever is required to be revised, then we will do so. And also, uh, regarding tax incentive, I just want to add that uh, after the GST regime now, uh, it's, it's not much of the state uh, issue now. Uh, the state cannot do much about the tax incentive, but we are working on that. Whatever state government can do regarding land uh, and other um, licensing uh, issues that the state can do. So this is a part of the NEDP, uh, and we are actually engaging Arns and Young uh, to uh, do this uh, ease of doing business there in the state government. So we are working on that. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, good afternoon. My name is Amresh Tiwari. I am representing Indian Association of Tour Operators, the national body of the tour operators. Uh, so we virtually 80% of tourists coming to India through come our members. We are having around 2,000 members, but approximately all over, all over country. My question is that Mizoram has such a fascinating uh, tourist destination, and where more than 84% area is covered under the uh, nature so, A, what are you doing to promote nature-based program? We did not see any itinerary where you are having a proper circuit 
if a tourist need to come a five days or a six days, what is a definite circuit you are having which we can include in the brochure and promote? What are you doing for a skill development at the grassroots level? You saw some, you know, the uh, home stay in the village tourism, which is having great potential, keeping the environment in mind. So what are you doing to skill them? And maybe you can have a MOU kind of thing with the IRTO, Indian Association of Tour Operators, where our member can go to the events there, understand the product, and make it a viable option. Thank you. Thank you for the question, sir. Uh, as far as the, uh, the, uh, the tourism is concerned uh, uh, regarding the ecotourism as such, uh, the Department of Tourism at the present It's uh, Mike Stanley. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, yeah. <coughs> as far as the Department of Tourism is concerned in, in uh, Mizoram, we at the moment are trying to develop uh, eco tourism as such. Uh, we have very limited numbers of tour operators or travel agent in, Iso in Mizoram. So we have to tap this market in the sense that we have to develop this market, attract young entrepreneurs into this sector. So on, at, at present we have just three recognized uh, tour operators who are doing inbound tourists as such. So we have, we have a lot of homework to be done in the sense that we have to develop the, 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 the inbound tourists as such. So uh, at the moment we are trying to encourage the, the, uh, the educated young crowd which you have in this industry, please. I suggest before you start developing and culling tourism, you must frame your tourism policy, you must for your environment policy, which need to be friendly where, uh, you know, the both go hand in hand. So if these policies are there, so lots of investment will also attract and the tour operator will also come. Uh, we so you have a tourism policy in place. As far as the environment policy is concerned, I think the forest department has already placed the, the policy in place as well. So uh, what we are trying to do at the moment in the Mizoram is that we have want to make the people of the people themselves aware of what is tourism is all about. Unless and until we educate the, tour, the masses of the prospects of tourism and the, the fallouts of tourism, you know, then we could have a big, uh, you know, fiasco like what what Goa has got it. So we are trying to avoid that. We're going to have tourism awareness programs. We are in 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 uh, in uh, collaboration with the uh, Young Mizo Association, which is a huge uh, NGO, and the MHEP. We are trying to educate the people in the sense the MHEP is a women's wing, in, as far as the food and, and then the cleanliness is concerned, and as far for the YMA, the tourism aspect of it. The footfalls, the, the 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 plus points, and the fallbacks which could happen with uh, tourism. We have our own setback in so far as tourism is concerned. anti-India feeling kind of thing. As earlier, before the insurgency in 1966, Mizo society was a very beautiful society, classless society, closely society, there was no crime at all whatsoever. But 20 years of insurgency has spoiled everything and today there has been so much of social degeneration to the extent that uh, various crime has also been creeping into Mizoram. And the, uh, the <coughs> The aftermath of this anti-India feeling is still there in the minds of uh, quite a few people, particularly in the younger generation. Before the insurgency in Mizoram, our contribution to the armed forces and various parameter forces, in spite of the small population, was very, very, what should I say, uh, appreciable. 
We used to have quite a good number of commission officers in the army and in various other paramilitary forces also. At one point of time, in spite of the population being small, in the entire northeastern region, we had the maximum number of ex-servicemen. But during the 20 years of insurgency, this has dwindled and has fallen to such an extent that today we can count our commission officers in the army in our fingers. But we are encouraging this and we have recently set up a signing school. And since the government of India has granted permanent commission to the women folk, we are also going to have the first uh, girls hostel in the signing school. It is 27th signing school and the first is going to be the first which will be admitting girl cadet in the school. <clears throat> and today of course we have been encouraging the young people to join the armed for various armed forces and prison forces in great number and we have been partially successful. And in this way slowly and gradually we are doing, trying to uh, do away with the feeling of long, feeling of isolation, narrow parochialism and all that. And today, of course, most of the students, uh, since we have students in large number in various metropolitan cities of the country, uh, this feeling of isolation, this feeling of uh, uh, that kind of thing is gradually dying down. And the young people are coming forward to join the armed forces in great number. And uh, also, the, uh, in fact, in the civil services, all in the civil services, our contribution is to be very appreciable in spite of the small population. But today it has dwindled. Even this, we're trying to encourage the young people to join in large number, various uh, civil services, all in the civil services. In this way, it's struggling. And because of this struggle, you see, uh, in, in some areas, of course, we may f face some problem of this, uh, you know, narrow parochialism, communalism, that kind of thing. But then these are being gradually overcome in Mizoram because of the attempt made by the government. Honorable uh, Chief Minister, uh, distinguished uh, ministers, there was a discussion uh, on building infrastructure in magnificent Mizoram. Uh, I understand there's a latent demand of steel when you talk about building infrastructure in any state or any area. We'd like to partner with Mizoram in building the state uh, through our steel. And we look forward to working closely with you uh, uh, in the new future. Uh, I was, however, informed that there isn't a free travel access to the state. Uh, I guess there is a permission which is required every time anybody uh, from this side of the world needs to travel to the state. So I was just wondering if, uh, if there's any plan to uh, uh, clear this uh, roadblock at this moment. Very good question. See, there is no impediments in so far as people coming from our side to Missouri. Uh, about uh, this law which you are uh, just speaking about is known as inner line permit system. That was created by the Britishers during the colonial rule because we are a very small population. These are in, now in existence in Arunachal and Mizoram. In fact, in Manipur also they are fighting for introducing ILP. This is no bar for others uh, to visit Mizoram. Now it has been made very easy. I don't know whether they, you can obtain this uh, 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 line uh, I don't know. But then, in all the Mizoram houses in Delhi, Calcutta, Silchar, Shillong, or everywhere, uh, this can be obtained in one minute. And you can even send a representative to obtain this in the land permit uh, to visit Mizoram port. Because this is no, we don't want that this would be an impediment to any pro prospective visitors to Mizora. Therefore, we have been, uh, this has been simplified to the extent possible. And there's no bar at all, and they, that, that will not create any impediment to visiting Mizora.
if I may add, uh, the ILP is, is available on arrival at the airport at the Bionic Gate. So on arrival, you can have your permit there itself. Good afternoon, sir. This is Prerna from Economic Times. I'm a journalist. So uh, I have two questions here. Sir, as we came to know uh, by way of these presentations that the literacy rate in uh, Mizoram is second only to uh, Kerala, which is at 92 percent right now. So, which is commendable. But then uh, the paradox is that there is a lack of skilled workforce uh, in, in the state. So as you invite the industry to set a base there, uh, what is the state plan to fill that skilled workforce uh, workforce gap? Also, if the literacy rate is so high, then what is holding back the state from setting up tertiary education institutes who can actually produce and churn out uh, skilled workforce that can actually be part of the industry? So this is one, and then another question I can ask. Thank you very much for the questions. Actually, um, yes, it's, it's, it's right that uh, skill development is one of the most important factor there. Uh, as I said in my presentation, about 4 to 6 percent of the population is in the working age group. That means in the productive age. And skill development will bring uh, economy to the next level. Yeah. Um, the state government under the new economic development policy is uh, developing the skill development uh, policy uh, draft is already there. It is awaiting cabinet approval. Uh, hopefully, it will come uh, very shortly. And uh, we are going to make all the institutions there uh, NSQF, National Skills Qualification Framework compliant. So, government under the active leadership of our Honorable Chief Minister, uh, there is a Skill Development Council uh, chaired by Honorable Chief Minister. They are actively working on this thing. So, uh, it will come true. Uh, uh, in so far as um, skills workforce available in the economy is concerned, our main concern is that a lot of people are taking education uh, abroad and different cities here in, in, in India mm -hmm. and they are working there. Okay. Uh, so most, many of them are not uh, coming back. You will see a lot of nurses working in Singapore, a lot of nurses in uh, Delhi, Chennai, uh, Calcutta and uh, Mumbai and you will see many of them in the sport clubs. Uh, many good singers in different clubs and pubs and uh, five-star hotels and it's like uh, you know uh, uh, wherever uh, there is a greener pasture people who are skilled are actually got stuck there so uh, we are uh, trying a lot of uh, this thing but like our honorable chief minister is saying we are the people who love our state so a lot of people are not joining uh, all India services and service uh, of armed forces uh, mostly because we want to uh, be there in our, uh, our, our state. So we are, uh, uh, the government is actively trying to accommodate all the skills people there, uh, but that's um, um, not a, uh, uh, may not be advisable also, but we are spreading across the world. So that's my uh, short uh, answer to that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if I may ask one more question here. Like uh, the Honorable Chief Minister said that uh, there's a feeling of isolation among people because of insurgency. It's 20 years of insurgency, which has been curtailed of late. But uh, one, of the, one of the major reasons that has been, uh, that has been uh, quoted is that the, there's just this free uh, movement regime. So is the government uh, planning to have a relook at the free movement regime on the porous border, especially on international uh, Mizoram uh, Myanmar border? I'm sorry, I'm not really able to understand the questions. Feeling of isolation doesn't come from inner, um, you know, thing, but the feeling comes from the treatment that uh, Mizo people get uh, from outside, as uh, already explained by Honorable Chief Minister. But um, I hope that feeling will uh, go away uh, even more if you come and invest there and uh, work with us for the development. Uh, of the state. As you know, Mizoram, even though it's a tiny state, but it's, it's growing much, much faster than the national average. And it's uh, as small as it is, but it's a big growth driver to the 
uh, Indian economy. So the captain of industry has to uh, be there actually, uh, so that we can do even more. Honorable Chief Minister, myself Achal Kochar from Swagatam Tours. I had a very enlightening presentation from Dr. Elizabeth Saipari about the agricultural aspect of the state. Uh, we as a tour operator would like to promote this aspect and if the tourism department can help us to promote some agricultural tour where you can provide us all the technical details which we can promote to our foreign nationals visiting India. Thank you. Thank you for your question, sir. Uh, hello. Yeah, in fact, uh, th this morning I was talking to my colleague, uh, Dr. Saipari, regarding the same uh, topic. Uh, we, in the department, has not really, uh, you know, looked in this direction. But uh, hopefully, uh, with this uh, uh, roadshow outcome, we'll work together and work out something together for horticulture tourism as such. Thank you for your suggestions, please. skill development that we just so raised the question here uh, what is the government uh, or what does the government intend to do is there any for example I know many governments in the world who give grants and incentives to their uh, local citizens uh, in addition to for example Singapore has a productivity incentive plan in place so if a company is investing let's say hundred thousand dollars the government also gives them to do the skill development uh, the same amount uh, as a 50-50. Uh, and the second question would be, do you have any kind of a subsidized or free land uh, that can be allotted to, let's say, a skill development institute or anything similar to that? Like I said earlier, the skill development policy is under process. It will come very soon. And I'm sure there's some sort of incentive uh, there for the student to come to the block and skill development students. Like the Honorable Chief Minister has uh, actually said earlier, we are having entrepreneurship development uh, scheme uh, under NEDP. That's uh, one of the most comprehensive one and a lot of components there. Uh, so that will also uh, a part of the skills development uh, process there. We have uh, entrepreneurship come skills development uh, program in various institutes uh, and also together with IMM, uh, IMM uh, Calcutta, Innovation Park, Innovation Park of uh, Mizoram University and we are also tying up with uh, um, medium and small industries uh, Hyderabad um, and also Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship. One more question, sir. I heard that there is a permit required which has really become easy now, so you can just stand at the airport and get the permit. Uh, but why can't we just abolish a permit? Isn't, isn't this permit, uh, I would say, one of the reasons of the isolation also? And pardon me in saying that, but why to have a permit if it's a part of the country? It's, we, don't, we should not get a permit or registration. That can be one of the reasons for the isolation. That's what I can analyze. I say this feeling of isolation, which I spoke about, is a gone case now. Because, you know, during the period of insurgency, in fact, insurgency happened in Mizoram because of feeling of isolation and neglect. The young educated people, they wanted uh, to be recognized, to be heard, and which was not forthcoming. Therefore, they had to take to arms. And of course, after 20 years when they came back, they realized their folly. And now, of course, their, uh, say, uh, they came back, locked up and buried. 
and joined in this whole mainstream. And the forces kind of feel that solution is no longer there. But then, to say, you have to take them into confidence. And for that, I have been requesting uh, all the Prime Minister, right from Indira Gandhi to Vajpayee to Narasimha Rao, Rajiv Gandhi, everybody, to Manmohan Singh, even the present Prime Minister. Now, the present Prime Minister has been very kind. He realized this and he has directed his ministers to visit, all of them to visit the northeastern states. And almost every month we have been having visitors from the central movement now. And our, this uh, multimodal uh, transit project was, has been appreciated by the subsequent governments at the center, and which the previous UP government termed look is policy. Now the present prime minister has termed this act is policy. Not only look, but act. And under this uh, new policy, new 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 system, uh, we have been working very fast about uh, trans and, 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 and completing this present uh, trans multi-model transit project. Also, uh, this is going to bring Mizoram into the national map. Not only the national map in the, into the Southeast Asian map also, and we hope that this will be <coughs> utilized by our neighboring states like uh, countries like Bangladesh, and even the Myanmaris themselves are very, very keen about this. That's great, sir. That will, that will do away with feeling of isolation. That, yeah, that, that's as tough. I say, that there's no more f feeling of isolation now, because uh, our, our, our young people are joining various services in the country, as well as the armed forces and various political forces. Even the girls are no exception now. Wonderful, sir. So, so do you envision that the permit will be gone away with uh, for the registration? And the permit to visit? You see, this, of course, uh, it, it rests with the government of India. Not, not is the, it is not within the state or the oh, okay. government of India. Okay. Uh, as I said, this is no impediment at all. This is no problem at all whatsoever for any prospective visitors to Mizoram. Understand, sir. Thank you. Hello. Uh, my name is Vivek Kapoor, and uh, very warm welcome to the Chief Minister, Honorable Chief Minister. I'm into the textile industry, and we are manufacturing the quilts and the winter uh, bed sheets and many products in Panipat. And for the last two years, we are already supplying to the Northeast. And uh, in fact, our goods are already going to Mizoram. Now, the textile industry manufacturing is not developed in the Northeast. And sending the goods from here, north of India to the Northeast, it takes a lot of money and as the winter items, if we talk about the particular winter quilts, they are very voluminous. So the freight cost is very high. Now, if some people try to put up the industry in Guwahati, but that has not been successful, because what I feel is that they, people facing the problem of attitude, the labor is not in that attitude of doing the work. So, is it, can we take it that way that the literacy rate is so high that the textile industry cannot survive in your state? I'm sorry, uh, can you repeat that question part? I just mean to say that if someone wants to set up a textile industry, as you know, the tex textile is the biggest employer of any state or any country. So if the textile industry, if the people, why it has not been developed in the Northeast as a whole, I'm not a particularly Mizoram. Maybe you are, you are doing some handloom work, some silk items, handloom items, but still we are sending most of the goods which you need for the winter because it is more, more of a winter country, winter state. Yeah, thank you for that question. I think uh, there are some misconceptions in that because uh, there are some uh, textile industry is doing very well there. Like uh, I said, uh, Mughal Silk in Assam is doing very well. 
uh, it is starting to do well in Mizoram as well. And we have a lot of embroidery uh, firms, uh, locals and also people uh, coming from uh, Australia and, and France uh, doing well. Like I saw in this, uh, my presentation, even London Fashion Week is using our uh, traditional dress pattern, uh, showcasing that uh, as well. So they're doing uh, a lot. Um, and as, 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 I, as I said earlier, ease of doing business is uh, something that a team in India is doing. So I think we are working on that and the Prime Minister is very serious about that. So we expect a lot of improvement uh, in a year to come. And if anything has to be imported from outside the country, which port, you have any port where it can be directly imported? But like uh, Honorable Chief Minister is saying, we are building that multimodal uh, transit project that will link to a port in Myanmar. So that means the Calcutta uh, uh, Mizoram uh, that uh, route through through the Burma port. Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, we are running out of time for lunch, so we'll be taking two more questions or any of the viewpoints that you have to give. Hi, my name is Vineet and I'm from M24 News. As we have seen the presentation that was about the tourism in Mizoram, we have seen that Mizoram is a very beautiful and unexplored state. So my question is that and uh, the most important thing that we have seen that the, the states that have been, they have been doing their promotions through certain taglines. So do the Mizoram government have any tagline for their promotion of the tourism in the state? <laughs> Magnetic. So, and what are the promotions that they've been doing? Because we have seen like Madhya Pradesh, like Incredible India, then Gujarat, Ekbar Rao, Gujarat, something like that. So something that you give a tagline that could encourage tourism in Mizoram, that, you know, affects as it's seen, always saying, jo dikhta hai, wo bikta hai. Thank you for the question. Thanks. As the tourism director has already mentioned all about this, we're now working on ecotourism and also <clears throat> uh, we're trying to attract as many visitors as possible to Mizoram. And that is why this magnetic uh, Mizoram is also being organized here. And so far as all those questions are concerned, you see, these are no longer impediments in Mizoram at all whatsoever. And, and, and the only problem now is that uh, we don't have any uh, much facilities there. And one gentleman was saying here from the hospitality department that we have a number of tourist lodges in various uh, townships. All these are losing concerns. We, if we have, if we, if we can have very you know, good partner, we don't mind privatizing all these uh, things also for the betterment of the state as well as for the benefit of the visitors. Thank you. So one last question. So we have started up with you and we are sure we will be ending up with you. Thank you so much for that. So, I just want to understand, sir, what the government is uh, doing in terms of systems, because I believe, I believe that uh, any business, any organization uh, is built efficiently on building good systems in place. So, is the government, uh, does you have a specific budget for, and what are the plans for uh, making it more systematic, uh, the complete processes that the government is running? Thank you for asking so many questions. <laughs> and it shows your interest in our state, and we thank you for that. You're welcome. And like I said earlier, uh, ease of doing business is a part of new economic development policy. We are working on that. But it's not the state government who can solve all this uh, easing problem. It has to be a team in India. We are working with the government as well. So we'll do our best uh, with the help and guidance of our Honorable Chief Minister. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm sure we have the valuable suggestions, your viewpoints, and of Excuse course, me. your questions. Just, just one thing. Uh, our honorable member of parliament, uh, Mr. Ronald Sapatlau, is here. He may, have, he may like to say something about all those questions because uh, he's a very much experienced man. So far as this uh, 
uh, tourism is concerned or various other aspects of whatever uh, questions have been asked, kindly give him the phone and I would request him to say something about it. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I'm so happy to be here in the midst this morning, especially in the midst where our busy people, our chief, honorable chief minister and finance minister are here. <clears throat> I've not been feeling well last few days, so you'll have to excuse me for my throat. <clears throat> Mizoram, a hidden potential in many investment areas as you have heard from various speakers, especially in the field of uh, tourism. This being a very uh, distant area in a way, it also poses a different uh, opportunity for the tourists because as you come there, you know, many of the majority of the people who come from West Bengal well, as a friend told me, come back with one phrase word, and that is, the Mizoram has a natural AC. As you have heard, that there is no need for AC sets in Mizoram, so there is no shops that sell anything on that. As the Director of Tourism has very uh, conveniently said, there are so much potentials in the fields that has to be still explored. That's that's where, that's where you need the investors. Uh, because of the good vision, visionary chief minister that we have, uh, the field of uh, golf course that has been uh, under preparation is just about to complete. And I think that has got a potential, a huge potential for outsiders. You know, people from Far Eastern Asia, like uh, Japan, Taiwan, Singapore, all these are the small areas, geographically speaking, with huge populations, especially with those who are on the economically upper side. They have a, a curious and a huge need for going to some new places. So I think. We're headed for a very good direction in this. Another good potential that I have is for that uh, you know, village tourism. They have developed a lot of uh, uh, other works for that. And I think that tourism in Mizoram has got a good potential as you have seen and heard that the people in Mizoram are very simple. You can go into the villages and get along with those villagers and those travel, those tourists will very uh, inherently like the people, the place and their way of life. And I think that is one great thing that we could market into the outer world. Much of the things that has been said are said in a nutshell. But if you come and you know, take a closer look at all those things, you'll have many more things surprising for you so that you will be uh, tempted or forced, if I may say, to come and invest. I think the uh, Mizoram government, a stable government as they called it, is a very good and friendly uh, pro-investor uh, government. I think it is out there for you to see. As you have known, they have not much experience in dealing with the investors per se. But once you come in there, there will be problems that will be new to them. But as you interact with them, you will know that they are genuine, they are serious about helping you, and that your dreams will come true. And I wanted to say a lot of things, but uh, I know you're hungry, so I should not hold you. But thank you for the invitation, sir. Thank you. For the last thing, for those of you who may be interested, Mizoram is very rich in flora and fauna, and it is also rich in biodiversity. And in the recent uh, survey, it has been declared as 
richest state in medicinal herbs. And for those of you who may be interested, we are most welcome to tap all this uh, <clears throat> hidden wealth in Mizoram. Before the conclusion, just wanted to remind you that if you see the Honorable Chief Minister and Honorable Finance Minister in a roadshow during February where the budget process is in full swing, that means they means business. So just wanted to remind you. Thank you.